That's a 10x improvement right there. We're getting 45 frames a second. So you can see right there it says Radeon RX 5700. Right now we're getting over 30 frames a second. It's actually 42. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today I'm going to be giving you a rundown on eGPU support for Max in 2020. I've been using eGPUs for the past few years. There are some amazing benefits to them, but most of the time, I've got to say, you're going to be running into difficulties. I here have an AMD RX 5700 in this nice tiny little package. Now I'm just going to jump into the, the negatives of it. If you're thinking of using an eGPU in Windows, it is a painful, painful story. It is possible to get it working on a 13 inch and 13 inch you have to use Windows 10 version 1903. When I did that, I had to do a little bit of jibber jabbering, but when I did that, I managed to get it running. On a 16 inch, I have tried everything. I've tried every single version of Windows 10. Seriously, I went through them one by one. I spent the last week on this. I've got every single Windows 10 version ready and then one by one installing them and I just could not get it working. It could be the particular graphics card I'm using. I'm using a 5700, not an XT, just a normal 5700. Could be the enclosure I'm using. Don't know what it is, but I haven't had any luck. So I'm just saving you the hassle. It's gonna be a world of pain if you're thinking of using it in Windows. Now, there are benefits to it nonetheless. So for example, on paper, this 5700 graphics card is 10 times more powerful than the graphics card in my 13 inch MacBook Pro. So this right here is Luxmark. We're gonna be using the GPUs to computate this model over here. We're gonna show you how much of a delta there is between the Iris Plus graphics and you know the proper AMD Radeon Pro graphics. And performance, as you can see right there, yeah, the 16 incher is three times more powerful on the GPU than the 13 incher. What I'm gonna do though, is I wanna test the potential of using an eGPU. So wows, look at that right there, eGPU, when it's unleashed with the 13 incher, 24,000. It's only two and a half times more powerful than my 16 inch. And the problem is with eGPUs is you don't get all of the bandwidth. So for some applications, it works really well and some others, it doesn't work well. So for example, if you're doing computational tasks that does the computation on the graphics card and then feeds the results on the output, so it's not real-time rendering or real-time feedback, then it works really well. For example, in Premiere Pro video editing application, there is a noticeable improvement with an eGPU. You can see when I'm changing the playhead and moving around, it plays instantly, not like before where there was a little half second wait. Using an eGPU with Premiere Pro, the interface was a lot more snappier. I could instantly play back footage as 4K multicam footage, worked a lot faster with the eGPU than without, and crazy enough as it is, exporting speeds were improved by not 1X, not 2X, not 3X, 10X. It was 10 times faster to export my projects thanks to an eGPU. So when you move the playhead, it does feel choppier before it starts playing again. It is noticeably slower than on the eGPU. But let's do the export speed. Look at that, 23 minutes to export this clip. So as soon as you click, you can play straight away. There's no noticeable lag like it was on the Intel GPU. And more importantly, if I go to export this project, look at that, the GPU starts whirring up and it's two and a half minutes to export. It's a 10x improvement right there. eGPU Premiere Pro. So massive benefits with that applications. Final Cut Pro, another video editing application, and it can handle that. It can't handle two, that's weird. Let's see, preferences. It's definitely using the 5700 as the external eGPU. I'm gonna switch it over to Iris Plus, just in case that does a difference. And no. No improvements whatsoever. It even makes my 16 inch chart run slower than it would without an eGPU. So some applications are optimized, others aren't. We're getting 45 frames a second resting. So that is ever so slightly faster than the frame rate we're getting on the 16 inch. 16 inch we're getting 43 frames a second. And usability wise, it seems very good. It's, it's maintaining that 45 after I buffer the screen, it's going up to 55 at most. I'm gonna hit the play button. Oh, we're getting 61 frames a second. Let me just run around with it. The highest I saw the 16 inch ago was 70 frames a second around the turning. So around here, we're getting 65 frames a second. 
and it's smooth. So the eGPU does make a difference with the 13 inch Fan noise wise, the fans are at 2300 with the eGPU plugged in. So it's considerably quieter and twice as fast in this scenario. With Unreal Engine, my 16 inch didn't really get much benefit from it. Sure, it ran a little bit cooler and quieter, but if you're constantly compiling and using CPU, you're not gonna notice a difference. With my 13 inch, I did get around twice as much frame rate, so it was slightly nicer to use. When it comes to gaming, of course, you can get Windows Bootcamp working with the 13 inch MacBook Pro. And what was amazing that I noticed was once I got it set up, and I'll tell you how I got it set up just so you can save some time. Once I got it set up, it actually accelerated the internal display of my 13 inch MacBook Pro. So I was playing Gears of War ultra quality settings, 4K resolution at 30 frames a second. The great thing about this eGPU and Windows version 1903 on this 13 inch is that you can use the GPU to run the graphics on your internal display. So you can see right there, it says Radeon RX 5700, eight gigabytes VRAM, and Windows resolution we're setting to the maximum of this screen, but I wanna show you what it's like to drive 4K graphics. And right now we're getting over 30 frames a second. It's actually 42 frames a second. Average frame rate is 39. Graphics are on ultra settings. We're 99% GPU bound, so the CPU is handling this performance fine. So here we've got Intel Iris Plus graphics with 720p recommended. I'm gonna make it 100% like I showed with the eGPU and ultra settings, no vertical sync. Now we're getting, how many frames a second is that? Five to eight frames a second. It clearly can't handle it. And Fan Noise City is about to be a facet of our gaming experience. Now, if you try running 4K using the Intel GPU baked into the 13 inch, it performs like five frames a second. So that's a massive, tremendous boost for having an eGPU in that system. Other things worthwhile mentioning is that on macOS, you can accelerate the internal display of the 16 inch, but if you try feeding the 16 inch to an external display via a Thunderbolt connection, or via the HDMI of the internal graphics card, it will run slower. If you wanna do that, it's best to use the HDMI port of the eGPU and plug the monitor in through there. Because if you try to send the signal to the eGPU, then back to the MacBook Pro, then to the other GPU, then to the monitor, yeah, it gets a bit choppy and it runs a lot slower than it naturally would if you just feed it through the 16 inch. Also, if you are thinking of using the eGPU to power your 16 inch MacBook Pro, the 13 inch, that one's completely fine because that doesn't use too many watts, but the 16 inch MacBook Pro and the 15 inch, they are beasts. So even though my eGPU that I had previously could power up to 100 watts of power, it still would discharge the battery when I overuse the CPU. One of the great benefits of having an eGPU with a 13 inch is that this guy can easily power a 13 inch. It only requires a 61 watt charger. Whereas these beastly 16 inches, they require 96 watts. It is possible with an eGPU. eGPUs can go up to 100 watts, but in my experience, it's always best to charge your 16 inch using its official power cable to get the maximum charge. I've had some scenarios where when I use my eGPU to power the 16 inch, I sometimes find that it dips into the battery of the 16 inch, so I always plug my 16 inch direct to the power. Finally, if you do want to get into the world of Windows, to get it set up, you use Windows 10 version 1903. There's a link in the description where you can get that version. Don't get the latest version of Windows because 1909 just does not work whatsoever. 1903 worked so mysteriously after a couple of restarts of the system. I can see AMD RX 5700 registered on my computer, but it was very, very confusing for me on how I got it working. I'll just explain the steps. First of all, when you install Windows, just do it in offline mode, don't connect to Wi-Fi, turn off your Mac, plug in your eGPU, and then turn your Mac on with the eGPU plugged in. You should notice in Device Manager, there will be an unknown graphics card inside. Once you've got that, disable Windows Update. You can hit pause for now, or you can go into Services and find Windows Update and just disable that process. Once you've done that, connect to the internet, go on AMD's website, and download the driver for your graphics card. For me, when I tried installing the driver for the graphics card, so I didn't have any luck with the AMD installer software. If you, like me, also run into this issue, you can just go into Device Manager and you can see I've got other devices listed here. I've got a video controller and if I just click Update Driver, 
browse the software on my computer. I'm gonna do it to the downloaded drivers that we just downloaded from AMD. So what I did was I went into Device Manager, I right-clicked on the graphics card, hit Update Driver, went to the directory of the AMD's drivers and manually installed it via there. Now, once it was manually installed, my computer reset out of the blue. After it reset, in Device Manager, my graphics card had a warning sign saying it couldn't load the drivers. So I uninstalled those drivers. Wait for this. I uninstalled those drivers. Then after I uninstalled it, my computer reset. And after I reset my computer, my graphics card was recognized inside Device Manager. So even though I uninstalled the drivers, after I installed the drivers, it was just there, just working 5700. And I had 4K, 30 frames a second, the Gears of War gaming on my Windows system. So mysteriously, after a couple of restarts of the system, I can see AMD RX 5700 registered on my computer. All right, so I hope you found this downloading of information from the years of eGPUing to your brains from my brain useful. And if you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed the show.